If you were a visitor to the solar system 3.7 billion years ago, it would have looked very different. In the outer solar system, the gas giant Saturn would be almost unrecognizable, as its iconic rings won't form for another 3.4 billion years. The inner planets also look very different. The Earth at this time would be a planet of blue, punctuated by its first supercontinent. The familiar green regions made by the vast tracts of vegetation we see on the continents today don't exist. It will be another 3.2 billion years before life conquers the dangers of solar UV radiation, and begins the steady march to cover the world. Closer to the Sun, Venus looks like a second Earth. But in a few billion years, a cataclysm will strike the Earth's twin, transforming the surface into the hellscape we know today. Looking out to our red neighbor, Mars would also be surprising. The desolate world we know in our time, 3.7 billion years from now, is unrecognizable. This Mars is alive. Volcanic eruptions make it clear that this world is far from dead. Underneath the blanket of a thick atmosphere, rivers run, lakes form, and maybe even life evolves. In this young solar system, there are three worlds that life could call home. But 3.7 billion years later, two of those homes are dead, with one being desolate and red. The tragic slow death of a world is the story of Mars, or at least how it's written by science today. Across generations, humanity gazed up at the red point in the sky and imagined all the wondrous things it could be. Many cultures saw this red point in the sky as an irritable god whose presence directly influenced our day-to-day -day lives. Under the scrutiny of early telescopes, the god faded, and in its place rose the tragic tale of an advanced alien civilization fighting off the death of their world with a planet-spanning canal and irrigation network. It turned out that this was just a fantasy dreamed up by some astronomers at the turn of the 20th century. As astronomy grew in sophistication, our reverence for Mars seemingly dwindled. Through a powerful telescope, it appears as a strange red world capped by white polar ice caps, and punctuated with some dark features. Not an all-powerful god, or home to an advanced society like our own. The image of Mars through telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope definitely paints an interesting picture, but in many respects, so do pictures of rocks. From a distance, a rock looks boring, and even perhaps pointless. But if out of curiosity you closely examine the rock, it could reveal incredible stories obscured by the passage of time. The composition of the rock could tell you how and where it formed. Chances are you find that rocks like this one can only form in the ocean. Yet it's found in a mountain range far from the ocean. Already the simple boring rock alludes to a fascinating past. If you break open the rock and are lucky, you might find something ever more enticing. A fossil. Within that simple rock lies secrets of not only the Earth's dynamic geological past, but also the biological past. If you were just to look from afar with a telescope, you would never know the story hidden in the stones. Looking at Mars is no different. From afar we see it largely as a boring red rock. But that perception quickly changes even when looking at images taken by one of our first visitors to Mars, the Mariner 4 space probe that passed by in 1965. Even these low quality images taken during the Mariner 4 flyby show a surface with more complexity than we could ever see even with our best telescopes today. Clearly the red rock of Mars has its own stories to tell. With each successive mission to Mars, our interest in Mars grew. It wasn't just a big red rock, it was a complex world that had a complex history. Even from orbit, this was clear. The giant Valles Marineris, some 5,000 kilometers long, is an obvious indication that in the past, dramatic events unfolded on Mars. Likewise, the colossal ancient volcanoes of the Tharsis Plateau show Mars was once a very geologically active world. This incredible view of Mars was imaged by the first missions to really examine the Red World, the Vikings of 1976. The Viking 1 and 2 missions combined satellite orbiters and landers to not only build the detailed map of the Martian surface, 
but to also land the first successful robotic laboratories on the red dirt. These laboratories would scrutinize the dirt's composition and even search for life on Mars. Our first experiments to look for life on another world ultimately proved inconclusive. In a series of experiments, the Viking landers tested soil samples by introducing nutrients to the soil. If microbes were present, then you would expect them to metabolize the nutrients, converting them into gases like carbon dioxide, which the Vikings could detect. From these tests, the Vikings did find changes, but what the tests didn't account for is that the Martian soil is very different from Earth soil. Without an ozone layer, the Martian soil is exposed to extreme UV radiation, which can make highly reactive compounds known as superoxidizers. This extremely reactive soil could readily react with the nutrients and mimic the activity of microbes. So despite some positive indications, it doesn't seem like the Vikings did detect evidence of life on Mars. Although the biological experiments attracted enormous amounts of attention, the great discovery of the Vikings came from the orbiters. From their detailed images, we saw strange paths cut through the Martian landscape perhaps resembling the canals imagined by early astronomers. But just by looking at these images, you can probably see that they bear a stark similarity to features on the Earth. Rivers. All across this dead world are scars that could only have been made by running liquids. The conclusion was pretty clear. Long ago, Mars had water. And not just stagnant water, but running rivers, rain, and giant lakes a complete water cycle. We can see it clearly in this modern elevation map of Mars. On the east edge of the Tharsis Highlands, just north of Valles Marineris, there is the unmistakable smooth curved trenches that flowing water carves out over millions of years. Clearly sometime in the past, Mars was more like Earth. And even if it's inhospitable to life today, it looks like sometime in the past, Mars could have been home to life. Just by taking a closer look, the story of Mars becomes far more complex and interesting. Our perspective of Mars has changed once again, and this time, it's filled with questions. How similar was Mars to the Earth? Why did it change? And of course, did life call Mars home? Over the decades with each new mission, we learnt a little more about the past of Mars. The Mars of today has almost no atmosphere, but to have liquid water bodies on the surface, it must have had an atmosphere. So, what happened to it? This question was the driving force behind the MAVEN orbiter, which since 2014 has been watching the sun strip away Mars's atmosphere. Without a magnetic field, and with its small mass, Mars couldn't stop the solar winds from stripping away an enormous amount of carbon dioxide and along with it enough water to submerge the entire surface of Mars up to 23 meters deep. The results of MAVEN are clear. Mars was once a world with a thick atmosphere that could have easily supported rivers and lakes on the surface. And the Sun is largely to blame for the death of the ancient watery Mars. While uncovering its past, the surface of Mars has become home to our robotic explorers. Each explorer has given us incredible new insights into the nature of Mars. Much like the orbiters, the rovers have found ancient riverbeds, and the car-sized Curiosity rover uncovered molecular building blocks of life buried inside Martian rocks. So Mars once had liquid water, a thick atmosphere, and still seems to have an abundance of molecules necessary for life as we know it. From all of our missions, we now have an understanding of how Mars changed over time. Much like how with plate tectonics, we can understand how a rock that formed in the ocean can end up in a mountain. But do any of these Martian rocks hold within them fossils of past life on Mars? This is the question that the Perseverance rover seeks to answer. Perseverance is largely a twin of curiosity. They share many characteristics, but the instruments set them apart. A key aspect of Perseverance is that it can drill core samples that one day may be returned to the Earth. And also has a camera capable of imaging fine structures and chemicals that may have been left behind by microbial life. With the goal of looking for signs of life in mind, Perseverance landed in the Azera crater that is home to a massive ancient river delta. 
billions of years ago, this crater would have been an ancient lake. And over millions of years, rivers running into the crater lake deposited their sediments, creating the delta that Perseverance is now set to explore. On Earth, deltas are incredible at preserving signs of life, so it's the perfect place to search for signs of past life on Mars. Over the coming years, Perseverance will study the composition of the delta and search for potential signs of ancient life, which could be as small as imprints left behind by microbes. To us, Mars was once a god. Now we see it as a complex world that may hold answers to some of our fundamental questions. Advances in our knowledge of Mars have only been possible thanks to incredible engineering and engineers that make the impossible possible. Each new mission gives us a new insight into the nature of the Red World. And with some perseverance, our curiosity may one day reveal that the now desolate world was once as full of life as the Earth. With a successful landing of perseverance, we will hopefully soon see if there are fossils in the Martian rocks. How will our perception of Mars change next? We're getting signals from MRO. Tango Delta. Touch on confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. 